Welcome to X4 Foundations. Yes, it's launch day. And yes, it's actually pretty good so far. I'm actually quite enjoying it. I didn't enjoy Rebirth at all, the previous game in the series. This one, yeah, it, 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 it's much more like X3, which is uh, good news all around. Except that it has a much more modern user interface, which is, again, good news all around. Of course, with X games, you won't really get an impression of how good it is until people have played it for possibly tens or hundreds of hours. But so far, I am pleased. I'm not regretting the purchase. And it is purchased. I don't get uh, given game keys or anything like that, at least not for main games. Uh, lots of indie developers contact me. Anyway, uh, X4. We've got uh, an entirely new game to get started with. Now, before we get started into the game, I want to cover settings. There's a few I would recommend changing to start off with. So when you're in here, pop that into settings. First of all, go down into controls and then platform movement, and then change forward, being W, uh, or, you know, whatever uh, controller you're using. Uh, in this case, you know, you have a controller, you can use it up here. But forward, remap to run forward, so you're always running. There is no concept of shift W to run forward in this game, and it, it's double tap. Um, there is like a run key down here as well, but uh, there's, no real, there's no real need to walk, so you may as well run everywhere when you're on a station. Just press W. Popping out of controls and into game settings, there's a few to change here, at least for my playthrough. You can follow along if you like. Turn auto roll off. So you want completely free movement in space. It won't try to recorrect you to be the same plane as everyone else in roll axis. So you can enter stations at whatever angle you like. Um, also, I've turned aim assist off because I'm using mouse and keyboard. That's precise enough for me. Collision avoidance I've left on. Maintain speed in menus, an important one. So if you press M for map in the game and you're traveling at high speed, it'll slow you down. I don't want that to happen. I want it to continue, particularly if I'm exploring, I want to head in a direction and I can look at the map while I'm actually going there. Show tooltips on, fine, no problem. UI scale I've up to 1.1 to make it a bit, bit larger for you guys. And head movement intensity all the way off because I get motion sick from um, head bob. So I turn it off in Minecraft and other, other games. That's about it. You know, there's nothing excessive to actually change. In graphic settings, uh, I've just changed it to be borderless window and um, uh, graphics quality high. I'm on a GTX 1080, as you can see. In the menus, I get about 100 frames per second. And in game, it's about 60 to 70 on high. But you can obviously drop that down depending on what graphics card you have. Okay, so let's get started with the game. You have a choice of three starts. Now, as soon as I go into this new game menu, it's going to start reading the intro. So I don't want to spoil that intro. I will stop talking while it plays. But we have three. One is sort of a, a young sort of little combat ship, a young, young guy in a combat ship. One is a warship. And the third one is uh, an explorer of some kind, a uh, discoverer, which, which you've probably heard from in the X3 games. We're probably going to start with the first one just because it is the first one, and you get a ship that's combat capable and able to do a few missions from the start. We will be able to get the trading ship fairly early anyway. For, second of all, um, we're going to go into this, I'm going to play the intro. Second of all, ignore the starting amount of credits. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter which one you choose, it's not enough to really buy anything, so don't worry about it. New game. Even after everything that has struck over the last few decades, the Terran conflict, the Xenon, and the jump gates shut down. The Argon Federation has established itself as a key power in this new jump gate network. And even its most distant colony, Black Hole Sun, is a hub of trade and community. Opportunities are a plenty for all. Every day, scores of young pilots set out from the system for the first time, on their way to find adventure among the stars. Okay, and we'll select that. Val Selton's log, day one. I'm excited to get underway with this new ship. I'm not entirely sure what I'll do yet. Trading, exploring, am I brave enough to face combat? Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be exciting. Here goes nothing. And that's the audio introduction. Two things you may have noticed. One, Egosoft have actually hired voice actors this time, it seems. At least in some cases. Some cases, not so much. Two, jump gates are back. 
Yep, that's right. We have lots and lots of sectors. They've learned the lesson from X Rebirth, the, the, lots of the reactions of the players about it. It wasn't too complimentary. But there are some good parts about Rebirth, and we'll cover those as well. Mainly the sense of scale. Okay, so it's going to load in, and we're going to be sat on a station. Uh, the ship's going to be docked to it. And I think the developers have de definitely taken some um, lessons and possibly some inspiration from things like Elite Dangerous, from Star Citizen and other such games. And it shows. It's very... it was quite nice, actually. You'll see shortly. So here we are on board the station, and it's loaded. I'm getting around 70 frames per second here. So if I look around, you've got an image of a planet. It's all very nice graphics. And these aren't just uh, sort of um, visual docking ports. This is where you will land. You will land on docking ports in stations. And uh, for at least the start of the game, you don't have an autopilot to do it. But there will be some additional ways of getting some, uh, getting it to be easier. We'll, we'll cover that shortly. The only thing Egosoft tends to be not quite as good at with graphics is characters. They're... Hello. Um, wow. Tissimanios Lotunis Hirasusis the third. Okay, sir. Uh, yes, and uh, she's a crew woman. Fair enough. Uh, the characters, particularly human faces, can look a little bit odd, but otherwise the graphics actually look pretty good. So here's our starting ship. You get one gun. You get a logo. We'll come on to the logos and remap that shortly. In fact, it's player information. So if I press M... Please remember to return your depleted energy cells to the recycling compound. Okay. Once the station announcement goes away. Player information. And once we press M, we can change from Val Selton, which is the default name, to Great Desktop, obviously. And we can change the logo. And let's change it to um, this for now. And you can see that logo will change on the side of the ship. Where is it? There it is. You can change the colour and all kinds of other stuff like that. But that's quite that's quite all right to start off with. So the, yeah, here's our starting ship. You get one big engine, one sort of okayish laser, and these wings. Again, still not sure. These wings actually move when you're when you're actually moving around in the game. So I'll show you that in a second. Otherwise, you can walk around on the station. There are areas down here, for instance, and you can press the transporter room. And go to different places so you can go to a ship trader well it's on that this is where we currently are manager's office and uh, engineering section um when you're in these uh when you're in these sections <clears throat> i think the uh, the trade is going to be this way yeah or maybe the entire opposite direction they're normally at consoles Incoming ship docking crews to stand by and uh, yeah, I don't know where it actually is on this station. I would have thought it, yeah, it's got a cart up there, so I assume that's where it is. Yeah, because there's a workshop down the other end. I just thought this would be blocked off, but if it isn't, cool. No, it's not. Okay, so the stations have the normal kind of trading thing that you're used to in X3, which is to say uh, there are ways to uh, purchase stuff for your ship, cargo, that kind of thing. But then also on the stations themselves, there are vendors and uh, nothing like Rebirth where you're going around collecting stuff from inside boxes or anything like that. But you can actually get vendors and there is more than one thing. So we've got a crafting bench here. Once we get some recipes, which we have nothing to start with, we can actually make stuff here. But there is also Hello. a vendor. And this is a trader in this case. Show me your words. And this is more stuff for your personal inventory rather than your ship's inventory. So you can see... Uh, the left-hand column here is what we already have, and the right-hand column is what the trader has. You can see we've already got a repair laser, we've got a spacesuit scanner. Uh, we don't have the upgraded thrusters or hand laser or stuff like that, but it's stuff we can actually buy. Goodbye. I'm not going to worry about it to start off with, just wanted to show that to you. And there's a, Is there a ship trader up here as well? It's probably around somewhere else. Um, don't think he's in any of these places. No, we'll come back later. Because I'm going to need to show you docking. And docking is an interesting one. Definitely one that they've been watching Elite Dangerous, I think. So we'll pop back to our ship. In fact, no, we won't pop back to our ship. One of the problems with uh, the game's default mapping is that to be SAD to move around. But in a usual FPS, shift is run. However, shift and the key in this game is a shortcut to do things. So, for example, if I press shift D, which would be like run right in a typical <laughs> FPS game, we teleport back to our ship. So wherever we are on the station, it's easy to get back to our ship, okay? So nothing 
don't need to worry about running around wasting time stuff like that you can just go to vendors occasionally so once we're on board our ship it's just like a little wait it's, it's real in the world we don't we can just get on we've got a little transporter room here and well our ship's tiny so no need for that just yet however we have a seat we can press f and we'll sit down this is our ship's menu now if we're in space we can get rid of it by pressing delete but uh here we have permanent things so we can get up we can undock we can trade we can look at our ship's information so here it is um looks like we have about 150 meters cubed of volume for storage of wares of whatever we want uh we have some deployables and not much else really it's a, it's a very very bare bones ship to start off with so trade uh can we actually sell i wonder uh any of the stuff that we already have um no no i want to sell my inventory that would be nice if i could hmm maybe i'll have to check on how to do that because what we've got in our inventory uh ship information i would have thought and deployables we've been given five satellites five navigation beacons and five resource probes i think we can sell those back i think and if we sell them back we'll get some starting credits and we can obviously buy them back later if we want to you will probably want to keep the satellites because they're one useful and two get actually requested to be deployed as part of missions so that's worth keeping those perhaps uh, i will say that much so before we get to any trading or anything like that this this episode is mostly about the basics of the game so we're going to undock yeah we physically undock you click and drag with the left mouse button if you don't have a joystick of course i'm just using this for convenience wsid is now lateral thrusters it's not forward forward it is x to accelerate and z to decelerate but you can also press tab to boost boost will however use up your shield so do watch out for that and we're outside the station and again it looks pretty good you can press f2 if you want an external view and you see what i mean about the wings flapping see are they flapping or is that just that no they are they are flapping independently there we go see very weird but uh it's uh it's thematically quite nice anyway so we can just slow down and let's just cover docking first of all because it is not the easiest and you will also be asked to dock with ships in space while they're moving so it's worthwhile covering the dock so let's just click the uh, click on the station oh i've already got it selected press shift d now and you get uh you, oh, that's basically requesting docking permission docking you can also just right click the station in the map view or anywhere else and you can request various things in here as well so there are various context menus however we're going to follow that green view and is it going to say we need to dock in there yes it is okay so we will start dropping down and we'll increase our speed as soon as we hit the docking bay it will automatically reduce our speed anyway there we go so we dropped 50 meters per second q and e are roll as you might expect and oh ships are taking off so we're just going to come in here and then we're going to turn for the basic reason to earn some credits early because you've got a dock <laughs> and docking here we are. we've got the docking interface you've got to basically align all of your axes until all these lights are green okay so you can see as we are approaching now we need the tilt axis and we need to head in the right direction this is how far forward or back we are so we need to just slow down until we hit there and we're stopped and now we need to press s to go down and that was uh, simpler than when i first did it so you do actually need to line up and then we're back into this whole menu Welcome. and we can step off the station or onto the station sorry from my ship so docking isn't terribly hard but then you're not doing it to a moving target there is however some upgrades so we can have a look at the upgrades let's pop into the seat look on the right hand side upgrade and repair dock ships and there's a bunch of different upgrades you can get for the engines for the thrusters and the laser there's only three things you can change on this one ship starter ship however more importantly is software on the left hand side you can get docking computer mark one mark two and then other things like trading extensions and long-range scanners docking computer mark one will make it so that you don't have to be quite as exact on those axes when coming to dock 
Talking computer mark 2 on the other hand means you don't really need to obey any of them. When you get within range of the pad it will just dock automatically. You're going to want docking computer mark 2 always. You really really are. Um, so yeah I will need some more money for that though. Okay so we're back outside the station it's time to cover the different modes that we can be in. Um, the modes of the ship determine what you're actually really doing with the ship. The middle two are probably worth covering first. Uh, in fact, let's cover the last one. The last one we don't have yet, that's Shift 4. Nothing, because we don't have CETA. CETA is the system in earlier games whereby you can accelerate time. You have to build that. That's not something we have by default. Okay, so Shift 4 is out. Shift 1, 2, and 3 then. Shift 1 is travel mode, super cruise and elite dangerous, that kind of thing. We'll come back to that in a second. Shift 2 is scanning mode, this. And this lets us sort of scan the modules on the station. A couple of, couple of options for that. One is that you know about those modules so that you can build them on your own stations. So let's actually just increase speed a little bit with X and get a little bit closer. The other use for this mode is that there are secrets around stations, sort of little um, particle effects you'll probably see, uh, sort of like uh, maybe like a welding sort of effect. If you get close to them, you can get missions or various other different rewards. There we go, you see we just scanned that. And we're just scanning things as we go through. We don't want necessarily finding these secrets on this one. It's not guaranteed, of course. Um, it's just one of those things you will see in the game. So watch out for them. They will be quite small, but you need to approach them really, really quite closely. So, uh, yep. Consider playing the upgrade tutorial. Fair enough. That's not a problem. We're not going to worry about that just yet. Oh, don't want to crash into anything. And then um, you can, of course, uh, scan everything. Now, I'm not going to do this on camera. You get the idea. Uh, once you've scanned a module once, you may see that it's scanned on other stations, so you won't need to scan it again. But, uh, yeah, so have a play around, scan everything you see on this, and then you'll quickly get the, the various different modules that you'll be able to build. Shift 3, on the other hand, is very, very useful, so let's just slow down. Shift 3, everything goes blue, and now if we hold down R for one second or two seconds, something like that, but not longer than that because it'll fizzle out and not what it won't work, Hold down, hold down R, and let go, and it sends out a pulse. That pulse will find objects in that direction. So you probably want to go to the four cardinal points. It is probably a cone, as you can see over there. Those little dots start appearing, so there will be grey circles around things. And lots of grey circles in that case. And lots of grey circles there as well. So if we then go into the map, and zoom out, you'll see that that's revealed a whole bunch of different things. We've got some question marks here, unknown stations, unknown stations, unknown stations. So why don't we just head out for one of them, start guidance to object by right clicking on it and turn that direction and go into uh, super cruise slash travel mode, shift one, everything goes orange and you start to be able to uh, go faster and faster again. I do want to try control space as well. Alert flight system disabled. We're still traveling towards that, but now we can sort of turn more. If I just go back again, flight system enabled. The faster you go, the less able you are to turn. You see, it's much slower now. So it's sort of representing at your speed and how fast it is to turn away from it, but you can disable that if you want to. Control space. Shift space changes between the mode where it's always like this. I don't need to hold down left click now. It's just like a joystick and then goes back to me be able to move my mouse around. No problem either way. And let's just bring ourselves a little bit further down so we don't slam into whatever the station this is. And shift one to come out of flight assist and come out of travel mode. So an oil refinery, fair enough. These colored hexagons correspond to things like, let's just slow down all the way down to zero really, ish. These hexagons correspond to, if you look at the legend, mineral and gas. So we saw that as a blue glass as we came in. Minerals. And then gas only. Okay, so we can zoom out. More importantly out here, you can see these yellow exclamation marks. As you might imagine, these are missions. So let's have a look at the mission offers. Guild missions we don't have yet. They're more part of different factions and stuff. So we go to the other mission offers and you'll see there's two, medium and hard. And this is why I say the starting credits you get aren't really all that much. The first missions 
they can go upwards from about 25,000 for really easy missions up to hundreds of thousands. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do these two, but let's take a quick look at them. So, uh, a person of interest to us has been spotted recently. We'd like very much to know a bit more about their ship. Unfortunately, they know we're coming, so we're looking for someone who can deep scan the ship on our behalf and send the information back to us. So we'd have to scan the ship, but I'm not sure whether we know where it is. But let's accept it. You know, if we get blown up, we get blown up. And it's pointing us towards uh, that, which I assume is the jump gate. Yeah, it looks like the jump gate. So we're just going to go into travel mode. And just to cover jump gates. So they're back from X3. You can jump between systems. But also, there are still the super highways that go between sort of parts of one system, like this one. And there are even super highways that go towards the jump gate and through the jump gate to other systems. So it's all bound together really quite nicely. I, I quite like it. And uh, we should be okay. So let's just center ourselves. If I just move out of the way, you can see there is a jump gate right there. And we're heading right for it. Now, if you want to buy a new ship, you're going to want to head this way anyway. You're going to want to head up to the left from Black Hole Sun. It's Argon Prime's there, and that's where the first shipyard is. There's two. One's called a wharf, where you get small uh, ships and medium ships. And the one that's called a shipyard, which you get large and extra large. Large and extra large, you're not going to be able to afford. Don't even bother landing. Um, it, well, I guess to save there, but uh, other than that, no, not so much. So let's just... Um, head through. We shouldn't have to decelerate here. We're going two and a half thousand meters per second, so any sort of crash will probably kill us, but through the jump gate we go, and you'll see it's much, much faster than X3. Boom, we're through. Okay, so we're now in another system, and we can disable shift one while we just have a look around. So that's the super highway, that blue line, and that's going to take us somewhere else, I think. Yeah, it's going to want us to go left, maybe? Although, why we can't go that way, I don't know. Anyway, field of asteroids, we should go around it, or through it. But uh, we all know the odds of survival going through a, an asteroid field. Yep, I can't remember the exact number. But there is a quote from Star Wars in there somewhere. <laughs> and never tell me the odds. Um, so yeah, let's head around this, and we'll head see if we can find our mission target. I, of course, will jump us forward so you don't have to watch the whole thing. And just a brief note about superhighways, I got on one, you just fly into it, and the mission is over here in Pi, or through another gate in Pi's Mists here. We've got apparently the trading station coming up, I don't want to hit that. Let me just make sure I'm not going to go anywhere. No, nope, that seems fine. There's the station above us. So you'll see, if you stay on the, the superhighways, you will get to, through lots of sectors really quite quickly, because they fly through the jump gates. Well, the, the superhighways do anyway. So you will end up going through and finding a lot of different places. So if you want to explore, just stay on the highways and just drift around until you uh, actually get a fairly amount of the universe scanned. I think there's about 50 total sectors or something like that. It's certainly not a small number, and you're certainly not limited to just one place like in uh, Rebirth. So through the jump gate we go, and let's see, uh, are we going to get our destination on the other side, or is it going to need other stuff? No, we're going to need more superhighways. So uh, let's just... Just change this and head onto the highway. Can we actually get on after this point? This may be one that we can't. Yeah. Let's just go around the front of it. Just engaging uh, travel mode will actually get you moving quite fast. To let you be able to move around really quite quickly. There we go. So, through here we go. And... I think this is one of the super highways versus the regular kind. Yeah, and it jumps us to a new system. Okay, with lots of rocks. Of course, lots of rocks. Let's go around and not through them, please. And Anopolius's fortune. Fine, it's the Eleanor's fortune this time. And let's see if our mission is here. Otherwise, I'll keep following it. Okay, here we go, and uh, we're arriving at our mission area, and that's this ship we want. Clicked on the way through, and we want to be in scan mode for this, I guess, so let's just disable and re-enable stuff, so we get closer. Uh, I want to re-enable my speed. There we go. And we're going to need to scan this, so I guess, well, you need backup. Okay, fair enough. Let's see. Um, Raiding Party M and your Zenon. So, yeah, we are okay to destroy you. Hopefully we can actually destroy you. Let's boost up a little bit. I don't want to use up too much of my shields, but uh, 
Can we match speed? Yeah, so we want that small dot that's following my cursor to be pointing at this lead indicator right here. And we'll get, kill this little guy. Whoops. Uh, yeah. I'm going to need boosting again. That's fine. Whoops. Too, too much. Too much boost. I think it's Shift X or Control X will let you uh, basically match speed with your target. And that's going to be useful when we're going to scan this thing, of course. But first of all, I want to destroy it. So left click to use joystick mode, or you can press shift space to go into joystick mode. And then right click to uh, basically fire your single laser. And there it goes. Now we can also slow down and press O. And it will drag in containers that were dropped by a ship, I think. To be... That's a container. Yep. And that is our... Mission target. And you're too far away. Come back. So I'm going to need to catch it up and then follow it in close proximity when in scan mode, I think, for the mission. So let's see how that is. And why are you still getting further away? You're still accelerating. Oh, that's not good. Maybe I should have scanned you while you're being fired up on by enemies. Anyway, let's see if we can follow it. And just following it for with it targeted. Uh, rewarded us with a mission, so I don't need to actually do anything. I don't need to get close to it or use scan mode. It seems to be fine. So we've now got 180,000 credits just from 10,000, which will get us at least a couple of upgrades. And the fact we are out here in space in the middle of nowhere, and there's a raiding party. Let's go faster in the opposite direction <laughs> to them. Yeah, hopefully they're not going to follow us. So if we zoom out, you'll see that super highway, that's the one you can't actually get to in the middle, it jumps between systems or sectors. And then the highways are inside the sectors with a blue line, and you can actually get to those. Just fly into them wherever you like. There are two lanes, obviously, to go two different directions. So, uh, I think what we probably want to go to, well, there's apparently a trading station, I guess we can save there, so why don't we just set that as uh, our guidance object, and we will get given a location to go to, let's turn around. Uh, we can control space and then re-enable. And we should adjust our direction. And once we get there, we'll save. We're going to save all of those credits. And then let's go and see if we can actually buy anything. Now, in X3, the Pony wouldn't trade with us by default to start with. So we may have to head back to Argon Space. But either way, we've got credits and hopefully we don't get blown up. I'll see you back at the station. And here we are approaching the station. And we're getting fairly far on in the episode, so I just want to say at this point, if you got stuck, if you're playing X4, you want any advice, put them down in the comments below. I obviously will be recording a few episodes, but this one is going to be coming out pretty much right away, the same day I'm recording it. So it's worthwhile uh, maybe getting some early advice. Let's just, uh, well, actually, turn around and enable super cruise in the opposite direction. And we're really not really crushed to a pace. It seems to be just fine turning around like this. In any case, uh, we're going to, whoops, select the station. And I'm going to ask for docking. And let's see where it actually sends us to dock. Some stations, uh, it is actually docking on top of the station itself. There is no internal docking bay. So you've got to watch out where it's actually, and that's one of them. You'll see that particular section there is an external docking bay. So if we just turn around a little bit, we'll still have to fly without much, and it seems that they'll let us land, which is good, but we'll have to fly and get these axes correct. So let me just get this. We should slow down automatically as we get close anyway. But uh, there we go. And we're just going to get aligned. There we go, left and right aligned, and up and down. And then we just have to wait until the, the marker at the bottom, the red one, approaches the middle. There we go. And we can just go down. Yeah, a bit of a glitch with this station, but otherwise fine. And you should also save at stations, but I also want to manual save. So let's just save the game here. I'm going to use this last slot for it. The first few slots were for streaming. There we go. Saving game. But we can't look, look like, looks like we can't upgrade and repair our ships here. Wait for the save to complete. Yeah, it doesn't have an option for that. But we'll see what we see on the trading side of things. So we can buy and sell space weed and space fuel here. 
uh, water and bits and pieces, but nothing we actually want. I just really, really want to use this as a safe spot. And then over here, we can go from the trading station back towards, uh, well, there's a Paranade Equipment Dock. We can certainly try that. Let's head there, and I'll save you the journey. And here we are at the Equipment Dock. So we're definitely going to just take Ducking Peter Mark II. 32 grand. Don't even care for number one. <laughs> just want that straight away. I'm not going to worry about long-range scanning software yet, but I am also going to take the trading computer extension and we're going to want to basically confirm the order. Add to shopping list is number four. And uh, we can press four again to confirm the order and it will take a few seconds to actually complete. But we'll then have a nicely upgraded ship and I'll show you the uh, docking procedure when you have the docking computer mark too. Just to emphasize just exactly why you want it. So here we are on approach. We're just going to press shift D. And it's going to give us docking rights. Uh, we can boost probably in. It will slow us down automatically, I would imagine. Okay, there we go. And let's just position ourselves. Point at the docking port. Very even. And just get somewhere close. And we dock. <laughs> so much better. In fact, it'd be even better if there was an autopilot. But I don't know whether that exists yet, so we'll see. We're down to 137,000 credits, but that's a good enough total for the end of the first episode. We got one mission, we destroyed an enemy, and we scanned someone for money. Hmm. Anyway, uh, do we have any other missions nearby? No, I think I need to do some more explorations. They do pop out into different stations, so we've got Paranid Wharf. That's where you can buy small and medium ships. Bear in mind, if you want to buy a trading ship um, for a Mercury, for example, for a Argon Space, it's going to be about 200 grand for the hull. And then you could outfit it however you like, maybe up to double that. So as you can see, two or three missions, you can afford a ship. It's not terrible uh, in terms of uh, actually getting some money. So there we are. There's our current exploration, second contact. Argon Prime, as I said, is probably up here somewhere, if I remember rightly. But we can explore the whole map now. We can head along the superhighways and start to explore. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the episode. We've got the basics out of the way, and uh, you maybe want to tell me your stories if you've started off in X4 and how you're doing. Obviously, if anyone else is playing and has tips and tricks, put them in the comments as well for other people who are actually starting off the game. Again, it's launch day. No one has a clue yet. Believe me, uh, this, if this game is anything like X3, it's really going to be huge. So uh, in terms of you know uh, exploration, in terms of things to find and do and everything else, so, I will leave it there for this episode, and next episode will continue. Not quite sure where I'm going to get to just yet. Maybe some more missions, and uh, once I've got enough credits, probably starting off a trader of some kind. And then, of course, we can get into stations and everything else later. Okay, hope you've enjoyed. Feel free to give a thumbs up if you have. More than happy to receive any likes. Follow me on Twitter at greatest, or indeed below. Click on the subscribe, and then the little bell if you want more notifications about these episodes. And we'll see you next time for some more X4 Foundations. As always, guys, thanks for watching.